Hello again. Thanks for your company. You are watching Australia's best online football show. Lots to cover this week. It's a massive show. We'll get straight into it. But first, a big congratulations to the Sterling Lions. They've been crowned premiers for 2013. In a moment, we'll show you the moment they secure the title. We'll also bring you the highlights between Sorrento and Bayswater. Speaking of Sorrento, we go one-on-one -on -one with goals keeper Curtis Aspen in a special finals focus series. And we'll also hear from Floriot coach Chris Barbas. His team has scraped into the finals and they take on Coburn this weekend. Lots to cover, stay with us. But first, we thought we'd kick off the show with a slightly different tone. Corey Hugo has flown the flag for WA and the Sterling Lions for years, but now he's decided to hang up his boots. And he did it in style during a special match against the Perth Glory, which was also used as a cancer research fundraiser, a subject dearly close to Corey's heart. It's a charity game tonight and also talk of this being your last game. Can you tell us more? Uh, yeah, pretty much. M my young fella has been crook, so we've been raising some money and it's probably turned out as a bit of a good way to send off, you know, raise some funds for PMH and um, I suppose salute to a good career. But I've, I've got another game left with Swan as my official last game, filling in for them in the First Division on the 21st of September, so against Wanneroo. Hopefully we can get three points and stay up. How are you feeling? Mixed emotions to kiss it all goodbye now? It's probably the most nervous I've ever been before a game. I think just because of what it means, not so much for me hanging up the boots, that's probably part of it, but also you know, raising some money for such a good cause. My young bloke's been sick. Yeah, he was diagnosed with an astrocytoma in April. It's a cancerous brain tumour that was in the base of his brain, and so that had to be removed. Now that that's gone, we just want to do, you know, raise some money to you know, try and solve, you know, find a cure for childhood cancers, particularly brain tumours and that sort of stuff, because it, it takes kids and, you know, no one wants that. So, particularly us and our family, we've got 10 years to wait before he gets the all clear. Since that was out the day after it came out, he was a different kid and it's just been amazing to have a, a little fella running around and he's already started kicking the round ball around, so we'll keep that going. I've played football for over 30 years and it's given me everything. I've got to meet some awesome people and pretty much retired at the start of the year and then came out of retirement to play for Swan. So I was just grateful I got to play a few more games. Then when Dougie said this, and I was wrapped to get to play another game at such a high level against such a great opposition and say farewell to people that I probably didn't get a chance to do when I thought I was finished. What's your fondest memory with football? I'd really have to say the mateship. I got to play in some, some big games for the state against Red Star Belgrade and you know, Glory a few times. I went to South Australia with the state team, but the people I've met throughout my career has been amazing. And that started with my first full season at Kingsway and the quality of soil we had. And then when I played at Swan with the people that I knew and I've known since I was a kid, I played with them and against them and with you know, my family, played with my brother, and it's just been amazing. And those, those things I will have, the football will finish, but I'll always have those mates, and you know, that's why I love the game of football. And a very heart-moving story there. Thanks to Corey and the Sterling Lions for letting us share their story. Well, speaking of Sterling, as we told you, they've won the Premiership for 2013. Time now to show you the moment they did it against Bunbury. Round 22 and Sterling travelled to Payne Park in Bunbury to take on the force in the last Premier League match of the season. From the kickoff, it was the local boys who tried to get on the scoreboard first. Liam Hutchison then floated in a free kick, but the force couldn't connect and convert with conviction. The Lions started to find some rhythm. This shot going wide. A quick clearance in the middle of the park and the ball fell into the path of Phil Arnold, who fired, but force keeper Ryan Montgomery did enough. The Lions teased the force goal again with this cross. Then Sterling went close in creating a clever goal. Some neat play between Arnold and his teammates allowed the striker to feed the ball. Josh Boyson had a chance but fired over the bar. In the second half, Hutchison tried to make something from this free kick, but Alex Viteski wasn't troubled. Minutes later, Hutchison was behind another free kick. This time it went close. 
The deadlock was broken when veteran defender Jason Gavin was brought down in the box by Ryan Risden. Risden, with a clumsy tackle, tried to clear the ball from Gavin's reach. From the penalty spot, up stepped Daniel Machewski to slam the ball home. Montgomery guessed the right way, but couldn't stop the ball going past him. With 15 minutes to go, Sterling were in the box seat. Machewski felt inspired and tried to double the Lions' lead, but Bunbury didn't give up. Bright Ababio made sure Viteski earned his keep. But it wasn't enough. The Lions roared across the line as 2013 premiers. In the true spirit of the game, the Force players made a guard of honour as the Lions players walked off to celebrate their victory. Yes, a very hard fought performance there by Sterling. And we caught up with Doug Hesketh and the team this week and asked them what it meant to win the premiership for 2013. Elated actually, a bit of relief as well. It's been touch and go the last few weeks, but I'm um, extremely proud of the group. You know, they've really gelled together well and improved every week. And really pleased for everyone at the club. You know, it's been a magic achievement. I think it's been said many times before, we've been working towards this for probably two and a half years now. The players have put in great performances all year. They've snuck a few wins in the last five minutes, which has proved crucial with a four point gap. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll say for everybody at the club, we're absolutely delighted. Any team in this league any week could win a game. You know, Bayesley are obviously the closest to us, but Sorrento got a great history in finals. Coburn have been on a great run and Floris have sneaked in as well. And, you know, they got some quality in their side and Chris is well organised. So, you know, we'll just prepare our way, play our game and hopefully that will be good enough. I think we've beaten most of the teams that are in the top five already. We'll be confident going into any game. Healthway and Football West have teamed up to find the Smarter Than Smoking Junior Player of the Month. Whether you're the star of your team or you just love to have fun with football, you can be in the running to win an Apple iPad. Each week, I'll be asking a simple question and the answer will be revealed later in the show. Check out footballwest.com.au for details and tune in to our new Football 360 Junior Show to see if you've won our fantastic prize. This week's Smarter Than Smoking Junior Player of the Month question is... Is having a win-at-all-costs attitude bad sportsmanship? To be in the running for an Apple iPad, check out footballwest.com.au and stay tuned to Football 360. Well, there was another crucial match being played on the same day as Sterling and Bunbury. That was Sorrento versus Bayswater at Percy Doyle Reserve. Time now to take a look at the highlights. At Percy Doyle Reserve, Bayswater City trailed the Lions by one point at the start of play against Sorrento and were hoping Sterling would slip up to hand the Black and Blues the Premiership. City got off to a good start, dominating most of the play in the first half. Jimmy Isaiah tried to get one through. Sorrento were under strength but were keeping the 2013 Cup winners at bay. In the second half, the best chance came through Sorrento's Ryan Pearson but his header hit the upright. But the goals broke the deadlock against the run of play, the coach's son David Price providing the finish. City never gave up. They peppered Sorrento's goal time and time and time again. But they couldn't get through the biggest hurdle on the day, Sorrento's keeper Curtis Aspen, who earned himself some handy points for Keeper of the Year. 1-0 to Sorrento it stayed. The 2012 champions focused on the finals for another season yet again. Oh, it feels great. It's my first goal of the season. Um, Ryan Pearson ran through about for about five players, played it to me, I just went past the keeper and they dominated us for a bit of the game, had heaps of chances, Curtis did really well in goal, but um, look, we're really lucky to get that goal and uh, we just defended really well today. You know, if we look back over the stats, we've probably had 80% possession, it was like attack against defence for the whole game, fair enough, they broke on us twice and had one chance, but we just couldn't score, even if we were here at midnight, we still wouldn't have scored, so it's... Um, I'm pleased with the boys because we created a lot of chances, but obviously disappointed that we, um, we couldn't take them. You know, you've got to give a lot of respect to Sterling. They've lost two games all year, and I think all credit to, to Dougie and, and to Gary down there for the, for the job they've done. 
In other results, Coburn fought hard to secure a win over Balcata. Balcata were down two goals to nil at half time. Coburn will meet Floriot in the elimination final after Athena struggled to beat Perth at Dorian Gardens. Perth had two men sent off. Athena only scored in the 81st minute through Ludo Boy. Ingle would miss out on a finals berth. They were leading 3-1 against ECU, who fought back to salvage a draw. And in a year they'd rather forget, Armadale was smashed five goals to two by the NTC. So, week one of the finals, and Coburn hosts Floriot in the elimination final this Saturday, while Bayswater take on Sorrento in the qualifying final on Sunday. Premier Sterling have the bye, and will meet the winners between Bayswater and Sorrento next week in the major semi-final. As always, highlights and results right here on Football 360 next week. Yes, a true football feast coming up this weekend. As you saw, Coburn clash against Floriot this weekend in the elimination final. Speaking of Floriot, Chris Barbas, their coach, joins me now. And Chris, it's raining, it's pouring, but you've weathered the storm in the top five. Do you deserve to be there? I think so. Um, like you said, we've uh, had a topsy-turvy season, a, a poor start, but credit to the boys. They never gave up and they always had that belief that they could get into the five and, uh, and we're there now, so good times. Scoring goals, though, in the last month has been a battle. Is that a bit of a bother? Look, it's not. If we, if we weren't creating chances to score, I'd be concerned. But we're, we're more than capable of doing that, and we are doing that. So uh, we've been up against some good goalkeeping uh, of recent times. So, um, no, I'm not concerned at all. Coburn, home and away, they've smashed you around the park. They're not going to be easy to uh, deal with at Dalmatnik Park this weekend. We'll be better organised, I think, Peter, than, um, than previous times. We've got a different team to what it was when we got smashed 5-0 there. So, uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be ready for them. Should you win against Coburn, Chris, who do you think you'll, you'll meet the following week? Well, when you, when you um, go with the stats, Coburn have had the better on us and Sorrento have had the better on Bayswater. So hopefully both teams will be able to reverse the form. All right, well, Chris, good luck this weekend. I know uh, the uh, Athena Army will be loud and uh, barracking for you. Now, speaking of Sorrento, we caught up with Curtis Aspen uh, on his thoughts about making it back-to-back -back premierships this year. It's what you work for from day one. As soon as you come into pre-season, it's, it's what you want to do. You want to get to the grand final. Don't get me wrong, everyone wants to win the league, which is all good, but everyone de determined to win the grand final. Now we're in the top five. Can't really see anyone stopping us, if I'm being honest. We've been there, we've done it. We're going to do it again. I feel we've got a bit of momentum now. We had a great win last week. I think we'll be a lot more relaxed. I think we've got a couple of younger lads in there, but also we've still got people like Jamie Armel, who's retired. He's still in and around the club. He's still passing on his valuable experience. But if you look at the team, most of us played last year, so for us really it's just another game. As soon as you're into the game we're fully focused, we'll all know what our jobs are and hopefully we can get over the line. I think my head tells me Bayswater, but I think I fancy Sterling actually. Everyone's been surprised, everyone said they're going to slip up, they're not that good of a team, but they're a solid unit. They've added some great players in the transfer window, they look solid. Yeah, I'd say Sterling, I think. And that just about wraps up another episode of Football 360. It's been a massive show, but just before we go, well done to the Northern Redbacks who've taken out the Women's Premier League title. Congratulations to the girls and their coach, Neil Bennett. He's done a great job. And a special mention to Dunsborough Towns FC who edged out Australind on penalties in the annual Pioneer Cup in the South West. Well done to both teams. And don't forget Perth Glory taking on Harry Kuehl's Melbourne Heart this Saturday at Hyundai Stadium in Mandurah. Kickoff is at 3pm. This is Harry's thoughts about this weekend's game. Oh, I'll be playing. Things are moving in the right directions personally on, on my level, but the team's obviously um, looking good as well. You know, I'm very happy to lead this team out. I'm very proud. It was such an honour when John gave it to me. I was very pleased and, like I said, it's OK getting the captaincy from uh, the, the manager and all that, but you want to get the respect off the players. And uh, we had the meeting and all the players were in, in favour of it. 
time for us indeed to go now. We'll be back again next week with a full wrap on this weekend's highlights. Thanks for your company. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week. But until then, it's bye for now. <laughs>